Welcome to Hatman Strikes Back Daily Boxing News. I am Hatman, of course, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the claim that Anthony Joshua was never a legitimate world champion because he only ever captured vacant belts, apparently. This is something I often see in the comments section of many videos. But before we get into that, if you appreciate what I do here, make sure you take a second to smash that like button like it was Sadiq Khan's face. It costs you nothing, it only takes a split second, and it really helps out the channel. Do it. Now, I have to preface the facts I'm about to lay out here because new subscribers sometimes get confused. You see, I often get accused of being an AJ fanboy, and I also often get accused of being an AJ hater, and it's often in the comment section of the very same video. The truth is, I'm neither. I'm an objectivist, and what happens is, Fanboys of various fighters who stumble across my channel can't wrap their tiny pea brains around the concept of objectivism. I came up with a catchy little phrase years ago to try and make it simple for them. No fighter is below praise and no fighter is above criticism, but they still don't get it. They have a psychological and emotional deficiency that prevents them from being objective themselves. And to stop themselves feeling inadequate about this, they like to claim that everyone has the same deficiency and that no one is capable of being objective. They then project their own biases onto other people, such as myself. In their minds, the only reason for giving a fighter any credit at all is because you're madly in love with him. And the only reason for giving a fighter any criticism is because you hate his guts with a passion. This is how simple and dichotomous their minds are. They cannot fathom the reality that some people are capable of actually setting their emotions aside in order to criticize fighters they like and praise fighters they dislike. They think that that is beyond the scope of human capability. No, it's beyond the scope of your capabilities. But some of us are perfectly capable of it. Thank you very much. So, now that we've got that out of the way, let's address this idea that AJ only ever captured vacant belts. Well, he won his first world title against Charles Martin on April 9th, 2016, and it was not vacant. <coughs> Martin was reigning IBF champion, so the narrative is struggling already. He then beat another reigning champion in Joseph Parker on March 31st, 2018 for the WBO belt, so the narrative is really in trouble now. And of course, he became two-time heavyweight champion when he beat Andy Ruiz on December 7th, 2019, who was also a reigning belt holder. The only vacant title AJ ever won was the WBA strap against Klitschko. Now, some people counter all that by saying that Charles Martin was rubbish and was gifted the IBF title himself. Joseph Parker got a hometown decision to get his belt, so he weren't legit. And as for Andy Ruiz, all AJ did was win his belts back from a guy he just lost to. None of these guys were established world champions. And that's actually true, but it's a different argument. Your initial claim was that AJ only ever won vacant belts. As soon as someone debunks that, you want to move the goalposts. Now you want to discredit AJ's title reign because he never beat a dominant or long reigning champion. Okay, well, let's apply this idea evenly across heavyweight history. Joe Frazier never beat an established world champion. He won a vacant belt off Buster Mathis and beat Jimmy Ellis in a unification who just picked up a vacant belt himself two fights earlier. Larry Holmes won his first world title against Ken Norton, a man who'd just been given a vacant belt. He didn't even have to fight for it in the ring. Holmes was also given his second world title by the newly formed IBF. He never won that in the ring. Mike Tyson never beat an established champion either. Trevor Burbick, Bone Crusher Smith, Tony Tucker, and Frank Bruno were all making their first defense of their respective world titles when they fought Mike Tyson. You do realize this, don't you? And Bruce Seldon was making his second defense. Then we can look at Lennox Lewis. He was given his first world title after Riddick Bowe vacated it. Never won it in the ring. His second world title was a vacant belt against Oliver McCall. He did beat Evander Holyfield, who was an established champion in a unification, but the final world title he picked up was against Hasim Rackman, a rematch with a guy who just knocked him out a few months earlier. Exactly the same as AJ winning his belts back from Andy Ruiz. I could go on, but you should get the point by now. Some of the greatest heavyweight champions in history won vacant belts and never beat a dominant or established champion. Should we then rewrite history and say that all these old champions were rubbish now? Of course not, because during their reigns, they proved their legitimacy with wins over top contenders. And if you question whether AJ ever beat any top contenders as champion, I already did a video about that. You can see it on screen here because some people claim he only ever beat old men. 
Beating a dominant or long reigning champion isn't the be all and end all. Plenty of fighters have done it over the years and didn't turn out to be anything special. Buster Douglas beat a long reigning champion in Mike Tyson. Leon Spinks beat a long reigning champion in Muhammad Ali. But neither one of those guys is considered great themselves. The reality is, if you want to be pedantic, you can pick holes in damn near anyone's resume. But what happens is, people tend to be very selective about it. Tyson Fury fans, for example, say that AJ's resume is terrible, but then turn around and talk about how great Fury's wins were over Deontay Wilder, when Wilder's resume is worse than AJ's. So how is that a great win for Tyson Fury? Make it make sense. Anyway, that'll do for now. Make sure you smash that like button, share the video, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and stay tuned for my next upload. Thanks for watching.